for one of the co-hosts. Yeah, thank you. Chrissy, and now you're on mute. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that happens. Gosh, I hope this doesn't become a, a pattern, but thank you. Thank you. I was just um, checking to see that none of the panelists were waiting in the waiting room. We will we'll start on time regardless of, um, you know, we have three of you here, so thank you very much. And we haven't prepared any background music, so that would be nice if we can sort that out next time. Cindy, I'm assuming you can unmute if you want to. Yes, I can. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you all here. Abid is suggesting a, a candidate sing-along. Community <laughs> singing. I'm sure we have some good voices <laughs> in amongst you all. You exercise it all so much, all of you. I'm sure we can make a choir of you yet. <laughs> be a risky strategy, risky electoral strategy. Yes. <laughs> I think somebody, oh yeah, I'm going to have to keep unmuting myself because I was muted then. So um, it's just coming up to half past and we have a really, really packed um, hour. So we're going to make a start. I want to say a warm welcome, Croiso, to everybody here, to our, um, our excellent panelists, candidates. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank you, of course, to the audience and to everybody who has submitted questions in advance and to the partner organizations. So EAST is running this event in partnership with Race Council Cymru, Race Alliance Wales, Stand Up to Racism Wales, and Make Your Mark 2021. So each of those partner organizations has been invited to present and ask a question on behalf of their organizations. So the format of the next hour will be um, five questions from the five partner organizations and each candidate will be asked to respond to each question in a very tight 90 second window. We will, as, as co-chairs, Cindy and myself, we will be very strict on the, on the timings and um, we will warn you when there are 30 seconds left of your, of your, of your 90 seconds with a sign, which I will hold up, not that page, but one that says 30 seconds. And at 90 seconds, you will hear a buzzer. And I'll also hold up this stop sign and you'll have a further five seconds maximum before you're muted. So apologies in advance that we inevitably have to be very brutal with the timekeeping. But we hope that that gives everybody a, a fair and equal opportunity to respond and that we're able to get through the five questions that have been carefully selected um, from the questions that people kindly sent in in advance. Uh, I'm going to apologize now that we won't be able to cover all of the questions that were sent in. We had a really fantastic response and range of questions which we tried to theme into the five questions that will be presented today. Um, if you have additional questions, please feel free to write them in the chat. And if there's not an if they're not covered today, we will collate those questions and give 
give them in writing to the candidates and hope that um, a response can be prepared um, as soon as possible and, and circulated. So we hope that you know, the next hour will be hugely informative for all of you, that you will be able to make an informed choice on Thursday in these really crucial and historic elections for Wales. Um, I mentioned that I'm co-chairing with Cindy Ikey. She represents Black Lives Matter Cymru and, and she will be helping me to keep to a strict timetable today and we'll also be doing some of the reflections and summing up at the end. And if I haven't mentioned it already, this meeting is being recorded. So if your camera is on, we will assume that that um, signifies your consent for your image to be captured for posterity. So if you don't wish that to happen, you're welcome to have your camera off. So I have to keep to my own strict timetable and I'm just now going to welcome, uh, formally welcome the, the, the five Candidates we have, we have Mark Drakeford representing Welsh Labour. We have Adam Price representing Plaid Cymru. We have Anthony Slaughter representing the Green Party. We have Mia Rees representing the Conservatives and Lena Farhat representing the Liberal Democrats. So warm welcome to all of you and I hope you enjoy the next hour. And I'm now going to introduce and welcome my co-chair Cindy who will take us forward. So thank you, Cindy. Thank you all, and it's a pleasure to be here. I am Cindy Ikia, and I am co-chairing with Rocio. And I hope that, it, as she said, it would be a very informative meeting. We're gonna start right off, jumping right off into it with the first um, person who is asking questions coming from Race Cymru, um, Race Council Cymru, and that is Hadassah Radway. Thank so if we could so please much. help on mute her, thank you. Thank you so much, Cindy. Uh, my name is Adassa Radway. I'm the uh, Black History Wales Education and Engagement Officer for Race Council Cymru. And may I just take this opportunity to say thank you so much, all of the panelists for being with us this afternoon and to take our questions. Now, this first question is, it's been noted that there is, this is a debate on race equality and nearly all the panelists are white, as are the leaders of the political parties in Wales. How are the parties seeking to increase the representation of political leadership in Wales going forward? And may I start off please with the Right Honourable Mark Drakeford. Well, Hadassan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you uh, to you all for the invitation to be with you again this evening. Uh, look, I think the answer to the question lies in real hard work for political parties to bring forward candidates who reflect the wide diversity of Wales. In the Labour Party, we know what a challenge this can be when we embarked upon making sure that uh, in terms of gender, that our group at the Senate reflected Wales in that way too. Now in this election, we will have eight BAME candidates standing for the Labour Party. Uh, and that includes the most prominent black politician in Wales, of course, my uh, fellow cabinet colleague, Fawn Gethin. But I've been very pleased to be out campaigning alongside Riaz Hassan, somebody I know will be known to many of you uh, in Swansea, who is our candidate in another winnable seat for Labour in Carmarthen West. Once this election is over, then we will begin on the business of preparing for local government elections in Wales. And that's a really important uh, part of the political landscape as far as securing diversity is concerned, because we have to bring people through the system. And local government elections uh, five years ago, four years ago, were a breakthrough moment in many parts of Wales in securing greater numbers of black councillors representing diverse communities uh, in our nation. Uh, the Welsh Government funds the Diversity and Democracy programme, which supports people who haven't thought conventionally of putting themselves forward, 
but who with a bit of extra help and training and encouragement can see themselves being in those jobs and on the pathway to being political leaders of the future uh, at the Senate, at local authority level, to make sure that our politics and our political parties in Wales represent the Wales of today. And that is a journey that the Welsh Labour Party is fully embarked upon. Thank you, Mark. Just in time. Thank you very much. If we can have responses from Hadassah, please. Um, thank you so much for that um, answer, um, Honourable Sorry. Patrick. Ford. Sorry, Cindy. We need to go to the next um, panellist. And Hadassah at the end. Apologies. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Sorry. Okay, thank you. So the same question then, please, to Mia Rees. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so we recognise that this is an issue. Uh, we need quality, active uh, BAME candidates representing all political parties. And we're very proud that we have had BAME candidates in Wales. And we're very proud of that. However, we absolutely accept at the Welsh Conservatives that there is more that we need to do. Um, and we start with what the barriers are to people standing for election. Uh, one is the horrific abuse that all candidates get online, which is magnified if you're female and BAME, uh, particularly if you're BAME. And I think that's really important to recognize. And the other is financial. Uh, it's very costly to stand for election. So we have the Mohammed Ashgar Memorial Fund in the Welsh Conservatives, which provides grants for people who want to stand for the Conservative Party who are BAME and find that finance is an issue and they can apply for that. Uh, fund, and I think that's really important. We also want to replicate the success of our women's programmes, including Ask Her to Stand, and our success of attracting BAME candidates to stand for us at the London Assembly. So Women to Win, which is the organisation I work with within the Conservative Party, is working with the Conservative Diversity Project to make sure that we break down as many barriers as possible, we get people involved in grassroots, and then we encourage them and ask them to stand. And I'm really proud that we have two fantastic main candidates that are very likely to be elected uh, in this election. We've got Altaf Hussein, who's a retired surgeon in South Wales West, and we've got Natasha Ashgar in South Wales East, who's a TV presenter. So really broad range of experience, quality candidates that will represent their communities excellently in the Senate, we hope, after the 6th of May. Thank you very much. Thank you. And may I ask the same question to Adam Price, please? Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Adas. Uh, I, I think it's a, a really central question for our democracy in, uh, in Wales. Uh, and uh, we are very, very keenly committed as a political party. And if I'm elected as the First Minister of Wales to ensure that we do everything we can uh, to increase the diversity in our democracy and particularly to um, address the underrepresentation of uh, BME uh, communities and people of colour. Um, uh, as a political party, uh, uh, we are committed uh, to working with our BME section on a program to increase the, rep the representation, the, the candidacy of uh, people of colour at every level. Uh, and uh, I think that for us uh, at Wales as a whole, actually uh, increasing the size of the Senev is uh, an important part of being able to ensure that it becomes more diverse and inclusive. And as part of that, we want to explore uh, uh, mechanisms to ensure that we can use that opportunity to, uh, to with, an, with a larger Senev elected through um, proportional representation, how can we use that to ensure uh, a gender balanced parliament and one that absolutely represents the whole of the diversity of Wales, especially people of colour that are uh, underrepresented uh, at all levels of politics at the moment. Thank you so Thank much. You. And may I ask that question to add a, um, Anthony Slaughter, please? Thank you. Um, yes, we have a problem. We, we can't we can't hide from that. It's it's obvious, and it's obvious. And we look at the panel as people have commented, and we acknowledge that we have a lot of work to do in Wales Green Party. The wider Green Party, the Green Party in England, has made significant progress in the last few years at engaging different communities, and we have various um, independent liberation groups within the party, LGBTIQ plus Greens and Greens of Colour. And we're now I'm really pleased to say we now have a Greens of Colour rep on the Wales Green Party Executive Committee. 
And one of the key tasks for, for them is actually how do we tackle this problem? And it's a problem within our party that the way we do politics is a very specific way that goes across all parties. But it's also a problem across the political system, I think, that, um, as I said, we're working with Greens of Colour to tackle it in our own party, and we'll be doing a lot of work with Bristol Green Party, which has the inspiring Cleo Lake, the first woman of colour to be the Lord Mayor of Bristol, and the person to get the first motion, council motion, calling for reparations for the enslaved and trafficking of enslaved Africans passed at a council level. So we've got a lot of scope and a lot of potential, but it's about engaging. And I've attended a lot of meetings recently with Race Science Wales and Privilege Cafe to discuss this. And I want to listen because we, we, know, we need to find out what we're doing wrong and how we engage with communities. And I think it's partly how we do politics in a very formal 20th century way. I met recently with them, someone some of you South Wales might know, um, Tariq Khan, who launched Feed Newport, an inspiring, very inspiring project there in the community. And he's a Green Party member and he's standing for us in the council by-election this week. But he was really frank with me. He's, his heart is- Time please, yeah. Anthony, time. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. And lastly, but by no means least, to Lena Farhat, please. Well, uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, it's a really good one. And one day I will come on one of these panels and not be the minority. And what a day that'll be in Welsh politics. Um, in terms of what the Welsh Lib Dems are doing now, this election, um, I'm one of two candidates being fielded from um, ethnic minority background. The other one being um, Stephen Radjam, who's standing for us in Pontypridd, as well as on the South Central list. Um, and we work a lot together and we have a great um, network of diversity officers in Wales um, who are helping sort of rebuild um, from the ground up. We've had a tough few years in the Lib Dems, so let's, let's not lie about that. Um, in terms of what we're doing, we are starting to prep for the upcoming council elections next year. Um, we have a diversity fund for people to apply for, so that'll be very exciting, as well as um, a sort of star programme that we've modelled on our Women in Politics programme, um, which is being run by our, um, our uh, POC section, if you will. Um, so that is the Lib Dems campaign for race equality, um, giving the best training we can find in the party to give people the confidence to stand at whatever level they may want. Um, it is a problem in Wales. Mia touched on issues online. It's a massive problem. I see it every day. I have to deal with things that other candidates don't, and it's unfortunate. And I've been extremely candid in my experience as a candidate here in Wales and what we do need to change, what we do need to look for, the solidarity we need to have with each other in order to push forward. Um, what I will say is I hope I can make it better for others um, and it's I, I stick out like a sore thumb I'm the only POC candidate I'm the only person of colour standing in North Wales I'm the only woman of colour standing outside of South Wales itself and it, it does show and it shows in the rhetoric parties use. Thank you so Thank you much. much. Uh, Lena and all the panelists, obviously you all have the desire to increase the numbers of Black, Asian and minority ethnic people within your party and um, you'll be campaigning for that to happen. Indeed, you've talked about some of the actual activities that are going on, but I'd like to just direct this particular um, comment to, to you, uh, Right Honourable Mark Drake. Over this year, there's been many things that have happened where race equality is concerned in Wales, which we are very proud of. For example, the Race Equality Action Plan, which has been sanctioned by Welsh Labour. Uh, we've looked at uh, schools being able to teach black history and all of the recommendations have been accepted by Welsh Labour. And in order for that to continue, um, this is my comment in electric, in electoral regions where one party has won several first past the post constituency seats and cannot reasonably gain additional uh, regional seats. How important is it for some of the thousands of um, their supporters to vote for another party who is committed to racial equality, bearing in mind that a few hundred votes can determine who wins a regional seat? Very briefly, please, Mark, if you don't mind. Well, I think it is very important for people at all levels to make their minds up on the manifestos the parties put forward. My job is to persuade people to vote for the Labour Party. Uh, and I'll be doing that tonight, uh, as I'll be doing uh, at every opportunity I have. And you'll have the opportunity tonight to hear from others who will be making uh, their arguments for you too. Uh, of course, I hope that you will 
uh, vote for the Labour Party because I think that offers the best opportunity of achieving the things uh, that Hadassah you have just referred to through the Race Equality Action Plan and the implementation of the new curriculum for Wales. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Hadassah. If now I can hand over to Russia. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Hadassah, and uh, all the panellists for your responses. Um, the next question is being brought by uh, Stand Up to Racism Wales and is going to be asked by Nimisha, Nimi Trevedi. Uh, Nimi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Rocio. Thanks very much. Um, so um, good evening, everyone. And um, my question is uh, in two parts. So hopefully, I hope that um, people are able to sort of address it. And I'll, I'll go in the same order as um, Hadassah went in terms of um, coming to Mark Drakeford first with the question. Um, so there's a couple of things, really. We know that the... Um, the far right uh, or the support for far right continues to grow um, worldwide, really, in many, many sort of parts of the world, but also in Wales. And um, we can talk about, you know, in depth about, about that. So that that really concerns me and how that impacts on our black community. So um, what, what are, you know, what is a panel proposing to do about that, first of all, in terms of um, how you take on the fight against the far right? But also, secondly, in terms of education, many young people are continuing to experience racism in our schools. And I'm, I'm very much aware of this um, personally through, um, through the contacts that I've had. So in terms of institutionalized racism, I want to, that's my second question. How would you propose that that is um, addressed in schools, particularly in the light of the Sewell report, which in my view has completely diminished the concept of institutionalized racism, which makes things very difficult. Uh, to take on that fight and we know that it continues to affect black people's lives in every area from education to jobs housing services but particularly education is my question how do we um, address the issue of racism institutionalized racism in education and make sure that our students don't continue to be impacted on uh, impacted through uh, as a result of racism but moreover educators themselves taking an active role to challenge and promote anti-racism in schools I hope that makes sense to everybody. Thank you. Um, to Mark Drakeford, please. Apologies, the system wasn't keen to let me to unmute, but uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I think the school's bit of it first, if I could. Uh, alongside the WLGA, we have launched the Hate Crime in Schools project to raise awareness of the issues we've just heard about, particularly with training to help teachers and pupils to challenge hate speech. And that is linked to the Welsh Labour government's Hate Hurts Wales campaign that we launched back in March, a major anti-hate crime campaign developed and launched here in Wales. In the longer run, it is the new curriculum that I think we must look to, uh, to change attitudes in school and to equip our young people to be citizens of Wales in the 21st century. Uh, now, that was uh, a bill taken through the Senate by Kirsty Williams, our Liberal Democrat member of uh, the Cabinet with the support of all her Labour colleagues, uh, voted for by the leader of the Welsh Conservatives, Andrew R.T. Davis, in the final stages, astonishingly and beyond my ability to comprehend, opposed by Plaid Cymru, uh, who would have prevented us from having on the statute book the first Made in Wales curriculum developed with teachers, with young people, and with the Black History Strand developed for us by Professor Charlotte Williams, and with the half a million pounds that we announced in March to back up all the work that Charlotte uh, has done. So in the longer run, getting that curriculum into practice in Wales will prepare our children and young people for the world in which we all live uh, today. And I think will go a long way alongside us. Time is up, thank you. Okay, thank you. Same question goes to Mia Rees. 
I'll thank you for the question and it's an incredibly important issue. Um, it won't surprise anyone here that I'm actually going to echo uh, Mark in regards to the new curriculum. A critical part of the new curriculum is that it creates ethical and informed citizens and I feel that tackling racism should absolutely be part of that in schools. You cannot have ethical and informed people who don't understand what racism is and the damage that it does to our society. Um, as Welsh Conservatives, we also believe that there's a need to equip teachers to tackle bullying. And we explicitly in our manifesto talk about the rise in, in, rise in homophobic, biphobic and transphobic bullying. And that should absolutely be expanded out to include racist bullying as well, which is not acceptable in our schools. But a lot of teachers have told us they don't feel equipped to challenge it effectively uh, with that long term effect that it needs. Uh, so that's that'll be really critical going forward. I'm sure everybody on this call knows that just this Saturday being a man was arrested in Anglesey because of being a far-right extremist and uh, unfortunately far-right extremism is not new in Wales and it is a dark underbelly that we have suffered from for many years and I therefore support the police in having powers to root out and tackle far-right extremism uh, at its very core within our communities. Uh, they need those powers and it's critical that they do so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, same question goes to Adam Price. Yes, what uh, Mark Drakeford admitted to say is the very reason we uh, could not support uh, the, the bill on the new curriculum and we were consistent throughout is precisely because it did not make it a legal duty to, to teach uh, the history of people of colour as part of the curriculum in Wales. Other things like other important things like relationship and sex education were written into the statute. So why, why was it not written into the statute to make it a legal duty to teach uh, the history of people of, of colour, slavery and colonialism, uh, as well as Welsh history and all its diversity? It was an appointed principle in order to support those in the BME community in Wales and in, indeed in other parts of the UK, they've been calling for, for this and we'll continue to do, to, to do that. And if we get into government, we will change that. Uh, we need to work on teacher training. So we need to uh, work with the Education work for, Workforce Council, other teaching uh, trainer, uh, training providers to ensure that teachers are, um, uh, are trained at all stages of their career, careers to an anti-racist practice in cultural competence, how to recognize and respond effectively uh, to racism. And on uh, the far right, one of the important things is we've got to put pressure on social social media. So there was a case in Wales recently with, with the Voice of Wales, a far right, uh, you know, uh, kind of forum. Uh, they will have it. They they were taken down from social media because of the pressure uh, that we all, as progressives working together, need to exert to make sure that that we do not tolerate the far right in any shape or form in Wales. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. And the same question goes to Anthony Slaughter. Thank you. Uh, two questions in 90 seconds, two very important questions. I shall do my best. Yeah, I think this work on the curriculum is welcome and is a step in the right direction, but I think it's partly at the heart of what's wrong and the, the new curriculum doesn't really recognise that. The way history and culture are taught and presented has been problematic for a very, very long time. There's, especially in the post-Brexit political landscape, there's a sense of triumphalism, that sort of Winston Churchill jingoism and very, very prominent white culture. And there's a real ignorance of the realities of empire and colonialization. And I think that really needs, we need to decolonize the curriculum. People need to have a history that reflects everybody's lived experiences. And as for the, as for the institutionalized racism, I think there's a lot of work there. There are some, a lot of people in the teaching profession doing some good work, but again, a bit like the political system, people from diverse communities need to see people at the high levels of education that reflect their lived experience, their communities. I think that will go some way to the rise of the far right is deeply worrying. It's always been and it never goes away, but it doesn't occur in a vacuum. And I think all political activists, all political parties and political journalists have a role to play in this. I'm seeing increasingly worrying amount of dog whistle politics in elections as years go by. Words matter and people use words knowing what they're unleashing, knowing what they're enabling. So I think we've all got a really strong part to play in that. And I also think as an activist, as a community activist, we need to be out there on the street saying no to the far right. Thank you. And finally, to Lina Sarah Farhad. Thank you. Well, 
both important questions. Now, firstly, in this uh, government that's just passed, as um, Mark pointed out, yes, the Minister for Education was indeed a Welsh Liberal Democrat and was very often, if not nearly always, backed by um, her Welsh Labour colleagues. Now, she made it very clear that she expected schools and education services um, to adopt a zero tolerance approach to bullying and especially any racial bullying. And this work was approved and helped by organisations such as say, uh, Show Racism, the, the Red Card. Um, there is a lot more that we need to do. Um, and as much as it is great that we now have um, Welsh history and uh, BAME history within our curriculum, and I must apologise if Mr Price cannot understand the meaning of the word statutory, um, it is amazing to see that. And I am proud. I've, I've worked in the education system myself. I think it'll be a game changer, but it's not the end of the story. Um, something that we're pledging to do as Welsh Liberal Democrats is to uh, remove financial legal costs for challenging things like workplace racism in employment. And it has happened within the teaching sector. So I think that's something that could be very welcome. Um, in terms of the rise of the far right, yes, language matters. It's important. We need to see people um, from a, a range of different backgrounds um, challenging the far right. And we need to come together to do that. It's not a political question. These things should not be politicized. Parties should be coming together to do so. Thank you, Lena. Let me... Would you like to just briefly respond? Thank you for all your comments. And um, yeah, just briefly, completely agree with the comments about how important it is to decolonize education and introduce our history, black, brown people's history in terms of experiences of the empire and the colonies and slavery. And it's long time coming. And I think the Black Lives Matter movement has played an instrumental part in terms of really giving the impetus for that to be introduced now. Um, I think that it's important that it's the educators and the pupils who take a lead in that as well. I do think that, but particularly obviously black educators, but also white educators, I think is important. So I really hope that the plans are, are going to materialize and, um, and that you know they are introduced um, in, in very quickly really, as soon as possible because I think it's important to give confidence to our black pupils as well in terms of taking the issue about, um, well, issue about racism and all our experiences seriously and recognition, recognition really that black history plays in, in both in our past and, and present and, and, and in the future. And, and as far as, you know, I'm, I'm pleased really to, I agree really, Voice of Wales absolutely important that the social media um, situation has been addressed and they've been banned from it. But as somebody, I think as one of the panelists said really, I think, you know, wherever they do arise, if, even if it is like on the streets and so on, it's so important and that we continue to oppose that and we, we come, come together in unity as, as is the case, I think, particularly where I am, the city I am, we have a, we have a brilliant tradition of doing that and, and sort of um, not tolerating that at all. So yeah, I think um, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rocio. Thank you so much, and that's fine. Thank you, Nimi. Thank you to all the panel members. Um, I would like to reverse the order if that's all right, because I'm very conscious that he or she who goes last should also come first. Um, so that would mean that Lena will be starting off, please, in response um, to the next question, then followed by Anthony, Adam, Mia, and then Right Honourable Mark Drakeford, please. Um, and so our next question, oh, and also in addition, we have a reminder that um, you will hear a bell hopefully when you are going over time. Um, so that's a good point in which to stop. Um, so our next question comes from Jose Cifuentes from East, please. Thank you so much, Jose. Thank you. Hopefully you are unmuted, yes, wonderful. In Swansea, uh, we do have approximately between four to 5,000 refugees and many asylum seekers, thousands that are not uh, totally and recognize. So I'm uh, raising this question on their behalf as well as on behalf of the charities that support asylum seekers and refugees and all decent people in Wales who do feel ready to help and welcome asylum seekers and refugees in Wales. Sadly, uh, due to ongoing dictatorships, wars, misery, People continue from coming to Wales from all over the globe 
and continue being forced to leave their homes and seek sanctuary in Wales, which is not an easy decision. If you are elected, how will your party help Wales truly achieve its ambition of becoming a nation of sanctuary and to win the hearts and minds of everyone who lives in Wales, to keep the warm welcome in Wales? The question goes to Lina to start with. Well, it's a really, really important question. Now, I am extremely proud that Wales is a nation of sanctuary, um, and that can't be understated. The work that we do here is, I think, um, unparalleled within these aisles, but that doesn't mean that we don't have things we could still be doing. Now, personally, one of my um, biggest worries at the moment um, is the amount of data and the relation we have to it when it comes to keeping people safe. Now, we have a devolved healthcare service, which, you know, has really come into its own now more than ever but we need to ensure that we're protecting the rights of people to access services without judgment or fear now as a welsh liberal democrat um we have pledged that we will do everything in our power to ensure services are not sharing data in relation to deportation action so that refugees and others feel safe to approach health services and other services they might require we shouldn't be looking to um to discriminate when people are at their very lowest. Now, the question of refugees is something that I work a lot with. Um, during my university years, I helped um, the influx of Syrian refugees that we had in Aberystwyth, and I helped doing translation. Um, I'm a fluent Arabic speaker, and this is my mother tongue. Um, and I think that it's about um, that community action, that community link, and ensuring that people um, who, are, who have come from the worst situations, and I cannot stress this enough, um, are, are met with the most supportive Welsh welcome we can give them. Um, and it really starts with that grassroots community having that grassroots action. I was really glad that my party helped um, in the closing of the Panashi camp, um, but there's so much more that we can do in Wales. And it starts with local people coming with local solutions to give that warm Welsh Christ Same question to Anthony, please. Thank you. Um, can echo, sorry, I'm on mute, yeah. just to echo Lena, yes, it is a great thing for Wales to be a nation of sanctuary. It needs to mean so much more though. We need to really welcome people fleeing the most desperate situations. And I think we also have to, it goes back to the previous question about the rise of the far right. We have to look at how immigration is used as a political tool, how it's used to polarize people and divide communities, how it's used to hide the real reasons people are suffering inequality and austerity. So there's a lot of work to do there in education and get communities working together, welcoming refugees, welcome, and being generally being a nation of sanctuary, fulfilling all our United Nations human rights obligations. I'm proud to be a part of a party that has always said refugees are welcome here. I mean, and we recognise the climate emergency is going to cause an even bigger wave of people fleeing awful situations. So we have to, we have to play our part. And I think it's also it's a two-way thing. It's not just welcoming and accepting people here. I referred earlier to our bill, our motion at our conference for reparations for the um, illegal, illegal trafficking of enslaved Africans. We really need to start putting things right. I and mean, Cleo Lake, the woman who brought that forward, has said quite clearly, we can't, we can't fix the past, but we can't move forward in harmony until we start to heal and repair. And I think that's crucial to this question and key to everything we do. Thanks, Anthony. The same question to Adam, please. Yes, we, we, we are really um, passionate about Wales being a nation of sanctuary. We want to see the devolution of immigration powers so we can give greater effect uh, to that uh, aspiration. Uh, but uh, within the existing powers, we want to expand eligibility for educational grants uh, to migrant children and young people, including the education maintenance allowance, free school meals, the pupil deprivation uh, grant, uh, and end no course, uh, recourse for public funds conditions uh, and the elimination of healthcare charges for all, all uh, non-UK citizens. Um, we also uh, want to we'll be uh, working with uh, bodies such as the Wales Migration Strategic Partnership to strengthen the local authority dispersal areas in Wales, as well as promoting community sponsorship groups so the refugees are, are welcomed in addition. Uh, Lena referred to, uh, to Amber Swift, and uh, uh, it's great to see, you know, Cara Digion, I think, has been really um, doing excellent work uh, in terms of the, the, the number of refugees that it's been able to welcome. And we'd like to, to spread 
that good practice uh, uh, throughout Wales and promote it uh, with uh, extra budget uh, timelines uh, uh, and uh, resources so that we can turn this wonderful aspiration that we have uh, into a better re reality for as many refugees as we can welcome into the nation. Thank you. Mia? Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, the Welsh Conservatives are committed to ensuring that Wales remains a welcoming nation and we fully support the community-led work to make nation, uh, Wales a nation of sanctuary. I think it starts with those grassroots communities, making them true homes uh, for those who flee wars and persecutions and suffering. And it's very important that people feel there is a safe place that they can go and they are welcomed. Uh, we have an absolutely zero tolerant, I have a zero tolerant approach to all forms of discrimination. Uh, and we have committed in the Welsh Conservative Manifesto to work with faith communities, particularly to tackle religious hate crime in relation to Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, which unfortunately is growing in our communities. And it's very important uh, that we tackle that. And it goes back to uh, that grassroots community action. I think it's also worth noting that we would extend free school meals to those without recourse to public funds as well, which also unlocks other support and funding for the education sector to support the children of those who are fleeing wars and persecution around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mian. The same question to Mark, please. Well, I'm very proud to have led a Welsh government that has created Wales as a nation of sanctuary. Uh, but Anthony was right, I thought, to link this question with what we were talking about a few minutes ago in terms of the far right in Wales. Because in this election, we have parties who've been allowed to take, play, take part in BBC debates who oppose the whole idea of Wales as a nation of sanctuary and would do their very best uh, to play up all those feelings that we know lead to far right parties being able to recruit here in Wales. Listen carefully to what Mia had to say, but the greatest challenge we have faced to Wales as a nation of sanctuary in the last 12 months has been the disgraceful decision by a Conservative government to use the Penali camp uh, outside Tenby to house people who are asylum seekers and refugees, uh, a camp which the Chief Inspector told the Home Office was absolutely unfit for that purpose, and where we as a government have had to work incredibly hard to get that decision reversed with the help of some brilliant groups in that area who came forward to support those people, to make sure that they, they knew there were people in that community who welcomed them, even as the far right targeted that community because of the actions of the UK government. I think what we have to do is to use the commitment that we see in those local groups, those Syrian refugee groups, to help people in Wales to make us a nation of sanctuary. You. That's all. If we can have Jose Sifuentes, if you have anything you'd like to add in response. Thank you so much for all your responses. I like to mention that East approximately give assistance uh, to 1,000 asylum seekers and refugees every year. In fact, Many asylum seekers and refugees are taking part in this forum because they are very keen to know the policies of the candidates to the Welsh Assembly. Many charities in Swansea and in Wales, including the Welsh Refugee Council, with the staff who dedicates themselves in an incredible manner to support asylum seekers and refugees who bring very, very horrifying um, stories behind them. Many of them do experience the frustration that even though all the candidates do sincerely, apparently, welcome asylum seekers in Wales, we do experience the contradiction that in Wales, in our own home country, we cannot welcome asylum seekers really all the time because the essential decisions of how do we welcome or not are made in Westminster by the Home Office and sometimes by policies which are totally contradictory to the views 
now given by the four candidates. So the question is that how a devolved administration would bring pride to waves to give consistency to what you have claimed that you want to provide to asylum seekers and refugees in a country which really welcomed them without having to go through the veto from Westminster and the conservative policies in the Home Office. Jose, did you want someone to respond? I would like in particular? to offer anyone the chance. I'm very impressed that the four candidates seem to be good, decent people who really welcome people in uh, asylum seekers and refugees in Wales. And that's wonderful to hear from all of you. I say that sincerely as a former political refugee myself. However, I like you to recognize the difficulties of decent people like you to sometimes put words into practice and to really welcome that. How would you actually do that? Our country in Wales do really have the power to do what they say. Could, okay, I, we are behind schedule, Adam, if you could keep it yeah, very yeah, brief, and then Amia, very brief. I think, Jose, you've put your finger on it. And as I said, you know, the important thing is that we need these powers in Wales so that we can reflect our values in the way that we uh, uh, welcome refugees and asylum seekers. Ultimately, that becomes an independent country that is a beacon to the world of how we should wel be welcoming uh, to asylum seekers and refugees. But even now, we could apply to have those powers devolved to Wales, and we will do that if I become First Minister uh, this week. Thank you. Adam. If I may, just really quickly, as as the Conservative government was was referenced, is that is that okay, Cindy? Yes, you may. Okay, um, I I just wanted to say that we do have powers in Wales that we can use to improve the experience of asylum seekers and refugees, those in education, those in healthcare, which currently do fall below the high standard that you so rightly expect and should experience in our community and our society. Um, I appreciate not everything the Home Office does will be popular with the audience this evening, but it is important that we tackle illegal routes and that we encourage legal routes that are safe and can bring and welcome people uh, like yourself who, who absolutely uh, should, should feel welcome and at home uh, in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Jose, for such a pertinent question. Back to you, Rossio. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure some of those questions of um, how policies will be put into practice will will be will come up in the, in the remaining questions. So um, my next uh, the next person to ask a question is actually um, Abid Quinaziz, representing Race Alliance Wales. So welcome, Abid. Thank you, and thank you to the candidates. Um, my question does follow on. And I suppose, as Jose said, it's really good to see people with good, good intentions. The trouble with good intentions is that we, people of colour, live the effects of racism daily. And a lot of the things that are being talked about is, is plans for the future, some time in the future. So we see many fine, fine words and ideas in, in each of those manifestos. How will your respective parties actually turn this rhetoric into reality? We mentioned representation in politics. We talked about education. We talked about refugees, asylum seekers. I suppose a, a simple example for me is with football. We've seen footballers taking the knee all season. And racism is still rife in football and in society. And people suggest that taking the knee is just per performative by the Football Association, not about actual change. So anyone who studies critical race theory would, would almost say, yeah, that's just, that's just part of the thing. Nothing's going to change. But very recently, there was a threat of a Super League or there were fans of Manchester United not liking what they were doing. And they took to the streets and even the Prime Minister stepped in to make change and things have changed. Can we expect you as a leader to make that kind of change to fight racism? What will your party do? What resources and what timeframes will you put into the implement in implementation of that change? Because we live it daily. Um, 
Uh, the trouble with reversing order is I had the order in my head, but Lena, do you want to start? Sure, why not? Um, thank you for the question. It's a good one. Now, um, I am a bit worried at the sort of othering of myself because I am a BAME woman, um, so we'll, we'll gloss over that for now. Um, but you raise an extremely good point. And um, the Liberal Democrats have actually put forward this election, um, what we're calling our rights-based recovery, and it forms part of our manifesto. Now, um, in particular, we have looked at two very big areas of discrimination and obviously all of this we would look to push in the next zenith term. Um, firstly, um, we've looked quite a lot at health and workplace discrimination um, that is faced by, you know, a lot of, uh, well, many people of colour um, and many minorities in general. And the second bit is looking at um, devolved competencies around um, justice and devolving justice in a way that could work for Wales. Um, so we would look to um, improve it improve ethnicity recording data monitoring factors, um, which are associated with, um, with um, things like school exclusions and, and that sort of thing that drive that inequality and bias um, for negative outcomes for people of color. Now, I think, I mean, I'm very data orientated myself. I think that that data would be extremely important so that we can actually know who's living in our nation and know what they need and know who's bearing the brunt of this sort of discrimination. Um, so yes, anything we put forward in our rights, uh, rights based recovery will be for the next in a term. So that's the time period, but we don't have the foundations yet. The Welsh government um, and previous Welsh governments haven't necessarily put in the right foundations to be able to deal with this problem correctly. And that's what we would look to do. Okay. I forgot the order. Anthony, do you wanna go next? I'll just make the order. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Very, very good question. Thank you. And it's, yeah, turning rhetoric into reality is at the crux of everything we're talking about this evening. It runs through every question, how we do it. And I, I can read off manifesto pledges. We'd like to establish a race, race equality action plan that genuinely investigates across every area, housing, health. We'd like to see stronger powers for a minister of, the Minister of Equality. But these are all manifesto promises. We quite rightly highlight what are we going to do. I mean, we would, we would make those things reality, but it's not just, and the question about how do we change, how do we make rhetoric reality? It's not just about resources, which is what comes across the manifestos. It's not just about budgets, and it's not just about funding. It's about something you touched on and identified. It's about systematic change. The system as it is, is institutionally racist. It is, it, we need to overhaul the complete way we think of things and we measure things. Now, not a lot of people know that Wales has signed up to the Wellbeing Economy Alliance, which is a very good step in the right direction. But again, it's well-meaning, but intentions don't always get delivered. So we need to work out what Wellbeing Economy means and how it includes everybody, regardless of race, disability, gender. We need to be working with those groups, getting it's something that's really a bit close to my heart is co-production, getting policies made. And that's where citizens' assemblies come in, which are key to the way we think. It's actually getting people affected by decisions, a key role in that decision-making process. Thank you, Anthony. Mia, would you like to go next? No problem. Um, so the Welsh Conservatives would introduce an equality, race equality plan. And I know the first thing you're gonna think is, oh God, another plan, we don't need another plan, we want action, which is what you're talking about. So I think it's really important to note that this plan will be put together with stakeholders who have lived experience of this very issue. We cannot expect bunches of white civil servants to fully understand this issue. And we recognize that. But I think what makes this plan different is that it will have clear targets and measurable outcomes that a future Welsh Conservative government will be held fully accountable to. So that would be the government and the whole of the public sector and all the different areas that this plan covered. So if we were not delivering it on our timescale, we would promise that from the off and we would be held accountable and shamed for not doing so. And that would be completely right to do. Uh, the plan would focus on four key areas. So that would be racism, employment, education and health and there will be clear measurable targets in all four of those areas which would be informed by those with lived experience clear research uh, and we will be held fully accountable to it because you are absolutely right there is no good in rhetoric if it doesn't become action thank you thank you mark would you like to go next thank you well mia, uh, mia is right we don't need another plan because we already have a race equality action plan published by the Welsh Government in the very final week of this Senate term uh, and a plan which is the product of the lived experience of 
uh, black people here in Wales. Uh, a group of black people chaired by Professor Emmanuel Ogbonna uh, are the authors of that plan. Published for consultation, being consulted on now. I've been watching the consultation uh, come in, being no doubt at all uh, that to make this plan happen, we will have to be absolutely determined because there is lots of opposition out there uh, from people who do not want to see the sort of anti-racist Wales that that plan has at its core. To make the plan happen, therefore, we need it to continue to be driven by the lived experience of Black uh, and Asian people here in Wales. It needs the money behind it to make it happen, and our manifesto is costed and will have the money behind it to make the plan happen. It needs people. We will create the race disparity unit that the plan asks us to have in the centre of the Welsh government, and then it needs accountability. I was very determined <clears throat> that the group chaired by Professor Ogbona should also be co-chaired by the permanent secretary, the most uh, senior civil servant in the whole of Wales, to make it clear that this was a plan for the whole of the Welsh government and for the whole of the Welsh public sector. Thank you, Mark. And um, Adam. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Professor Ogbona's uh, work is excellent. Uh, I, you know, it, it re really actually is the foundation uh, uh, for um, moving forward. But I think uh, part of his analysis, it goes to the heart of this question, which is, you know, there have been laudable aims, but there's been no progress over 20, 30 years. So what's going to change uh, now? Uh, and I, I think there has to be a... Uh, an absolute clear commitment to all of the areas within the, the Race Equality Action Plan, I mean, particularly, I mean, um, increasing uh, BME uh, representation at all levels of the workforce has to be ambitious and it has to be binding, uh, because otherwise we're going to be we're going to be exact having exactly the same conversation in twenty years' time. Uh, I just like to one, uh, mention one other critical area, which it which is uh, the structural racism within our criminal justice system. Uh, that isn't currently devolved, but we've got to address it, uh, and we will as the next government of Wales. We have one of the most racially disproportional uh, levels of uh, imprisonment of any nation in the world in Wales, uh, despite what we may think. Uh, that in, uh, structural racism is right at the heart of our criminal justice system in Wales. We need to analyse why that is, is, is the case and we need to bring that in, the, uh, getting to grips with that and undoing that structural racism within the criminal justice system has to be a core element uh, of uh, the Race Equality Action Plan, not least because of the tragic events that we've seen uh, in, uh, in Wales uh, in, in recent times. Thank you, Adam. I've not missed anyone, have I? No. Um, I, I suppose it, it, it is that thing. And when when Race Alliance Wales got together, one of our first meetings, some of some of us old timers sat there thinking, weren't we here thirty years ago? And there's something about something about yes, a plan's great, and um, Emmanuel's work is is brilliant, and we we'll work along with that. I suppose really key steps, some really impactful things that can happen. We talk about health and we talk about gathering more data and gathering more data. And sometimes the thing becomes about gathering data rather than fixing the problem. And there are really clear problems. There are clear problems in, in health inequalities. There are employ unemployment, employment, criminal justice, as you pointed out, through junior schools, Universities. The, there was a paper out on school, school and racism. Universities being racist. So yeah, some real, real action to go with the rhetoric. And that's not to suggest that none of you aren't saying the right things. It's about one of the things we want is let's let's make it different. Let's work together and make it different. Thank you. Thank you, Abid, um, and how. Cindy will, will introduce the last question and just to say we're running a very few minutes late but we will finish no more than five minutes over time hopefully that's okay with all of you thank you thank you Rocio and the final question comes from Shazia Ali from Make Your Mark 2021 hi everyone um I'm like 
Lindy said, I'm sure as from Make Your Mark, we are empowering young people of colour to vote um, in this election. So my question is, with a growing independence movement in Wales and a strengthening Welsh identity, what will each of your parties do to make sure the Welsh identity continues to become an inclusive one and that people of colour are and that people of colour are and will always be seen as Welsh people. Can we start with Mark, please? Uh, well, thank you very much. And look, uh, at the end of this evening, I want to end with a note of optimism for us. We've talked a lot about the challenges and the challenges are absolutely real. Uh, but on this question, let's have some hope for the future as well. And let me give you just one example of it. Uh, as a result of the pandemic here in Wales. We've got a new group that's been formed called Muslim Doctors Cymru. And I just think in that very title, it sums up everything that lies behind this question because they are a group of young Muslim doctors born here in Wales, educated here in Wales, working in the Welsh Health Service. I've heard a couple of people say this evening, nothing has changed in 30 years. An enormous amount has changed in 30 years. Those young people are symbolic of the things that have changed. They are people of Muslim heritage, but look at their title, Muslim Doctors Cymru. They chose that as their identity. They are absolutely the sort of people that the question talks about. Those are the people that I want to see in Wales, people who are confident in their own sense of themselves, confident in their sense of Welshness, not attracted to nationalism to separate us off from the rest of the world, but to be confident Welsh citizens of the future. Can we hear from Mia next, please? Of course. Um, identity is complex and it's absolutely personal. And if you feel in here that you are Welsh, then you should have every right to feel that and that should be given credit to and respected by those around you. You do not need to sing in a male voice choir, go to chapel and be white to be Welsh. And I think it's really important that the image of what is Welsh that we project to the wider world and to Britain is important that it is Welsh in all of its beauty and diversity. And I think that at the moment, we're still stuck with daffodils and leeks and we are beyond that now. And I think that that's really important because I think image and the image that we project is really important. We've spoken a lot about education uh, today and I think that that's right and we absolutely should do. And I think that starts with the history and the curriculum. And I think it's important that we have a Welsh curriculum where we talk positively about the incredible achievements of people of colour in Wales. Uh, and, and it needs to start from an early age in school so that everybody understands that as a Wales, we are not one type of Welsh. We are many, many types of Welsh. I am a proud Welsh British person, whilst Adam understandably doesn't feel the same. And I respect Adam's decision to feel differently about that. Uh, so for me, it's the Wales that we project to the wide world and it starts in education. Uh, and I think we should absolutely celebrate Wales, all of its people and all of its achievements. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go to Adam next, please? I, I think one of the most exciting things about the independence movement, uh, Shazia, that you have referenced um, is the way that right at the heart of it is a celebration of our, of our diversity. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're a small nation uh, of 3.3 million people, but there are 3.3 million uh, ways to be Welsh and all of them are included in this growing movement and it's so exciting you know it's um, it's a forward looking it's an outward looking uh, movement uh, in its attitude and it's even it's politically diverse as well uh, you know Anthony's party is, is is a part of it even actually seven Labour candidates Mark standing at this election are inspired by this hopeful message you know it's there's there's something wonderful about the idea of independence because it's about starting from scratch it's about redesigning an entire nation and you know what we need everyone's voice we need everyone's perspective everyone is invited and what a party we're gonna have we know to throw a party in wales what a party we're gonna have when when we get there and right at the heart of it is what we talked about tonight the nation of sanctuary our diverse values that's the wales uh, that we're that, that we're building it's not about where you're from it's about where we're heading, where we're heading. And I've never been more optimistic about the future of Wales and the future of, of the world than I am now coming out of this 
dark pandemic, I think people are responding to hope and it's, it's a really exciting time. Thank you. Can we go to Lena next, please? Thank you, Shazia. It's a great question. And um, I think there's a lot of work to do and there's a lot of inspiring we need to do for our young people. I spend a lot of time um, talking to, uh, to young people of colour across Wales um, because there's just not that many of us standing for election. So um, that's what I end up doing. Um, and I think that, yeah, there is a lot of optimism coming out now. And you've got, people can choose how they want to be Welsh. It doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, how you identify, what your past is. It doesn't matter what your story is. It's the story that you're gonna write here in Wales. There is no one way to be Welsh. And um, I'm really impressed by the absolute optimism that, that Mr. Price has and, and, and the way that, you know, in the past, in my local area, He's wanted to pit neighbour against neighbour and stick it up on a billboard by a train station. Well, we'll be waiting for an apology on that one. Um, but it's not about neighbour against neighbour. It's about neighbours coming together in the toughest times. And that's what I'm proud of. And that's what I want to keep doing. It's been tough standing for election. And I want to keep inspiring others to do it after me. I've been extremely candid about my experiences. And I want to be able to work for those after me, even when I'm retired. And so I can say I was the future once. I want to be the past someday and give others a voice. Thank you. And finally to Anthony. Okay, on this overall note of optimism coming from everyone, which is a good, good way to end, I think. Um, many of you all know Wales Green Party formally became, came out in favour of Welsh independence at our conference last year. Our policy is made by members at conference to a grassroots democratic organisation. And there had been some resistance for some years, and I think it was partly because of the reason of this question about inclusivity, and I think the independent move, independence movement does look more inclusive than it did do 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I think that is really, really key. And there's still a lot of work to go. That isn't an excuse. There is still a lot of work to be done. But we're a party, we describe ourselves, we're an internationalist party that believes in localism. So we believe in power being devolved to the lowest possible level. So obviously we'd be pro-Welsh independence. But we also believe that equality has to be universal and it has to be intergenerational, otherwise it's not equality. And that comes back to this question, how do we keep, how do we make it an inclusive movement? How do we make it an inclusive Wales? And we all have, the politicians here especially, we all have a lot of work to do on this. We need to engage every sector of the community. As everyone has said, if you feel you're Welsh, you are Welsh. And we need to welcome people who want to be here and it needs to feel welcoming. And it goes back to some of the things we've been talking about, about the polarisation. We need to tackle all of that. There is no room for exclusivity in a movement forward and taking Wales forward. And we have to be really, really clear as that as activists and political parties, you know, in an independent Wales, and indeed even in the movement, the campaign for an independent Wales, there can be no place for Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, transphobia, or any other bigotry. Like I said, equality is universal or it is nothing. Thank you all. I know we're very short on time, but I just wanted to say that I know you've all touched on optimism and I don't want to bring the mood down and I'm glad to hear it. But just the reality is that our lived experience is some people in the name of some of your parties have excluded us from this Welsh identity. So it's everyone's responsibilities and especially, you know, our party leaders and candidates to ensure that people don't take your party's names and push us out and exclude us. We are all Welsh and, and we hope you can have some practical actions in tackling that. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Shazia, and thank you to all the panel members. Um, Rosio, if you want to say a few words before I wrap up with some closing remarks. Yes, just a huge thank you to all the panellists um, for, for sticking so well to time. I'm really impressed. Um, and to all the partner organisations and the people who asked the questions and the people who sent in the questions that helped us really um, collate those themes as the most important themes that people wanted to have um, questions answered on. Um, so just huge thank you. And, and Cindy will now give some really uh, insightful closing remarks, I'm sure. But thank you from me. Thank you. Thank you all so much. So thank you all for listening so attentively, for engaging with us, for putting your messages in the chat, just to remind you that they will be being put forward to all the panel members. So even though they're not answered here, we do hope that they will take... Um, their own initiative to respond on their various platforms to some of the questions at least that they receive or at least the common themes. Um, we want to tell you all that this has been put in place, this hustings has been put in place not to have the leaders and those who are running as candidates to 
um, use it as an opportunity to debate one another, but to ra but rather to address the concerns that you have raised. And I really hope that you are content, at least much more than when you came in, that we have managed to facilitate that today. Um, we hope that you leave with new hope um, in whichever party that you might decide to vote on. Um, and that you live, leave with new hope to actually participate in politics in your own way and to vote because it's so important. I can't stress that enough. It's very important that you do not remain apolitical, that you do find the fire in your belly, as it were, to take up that Welsh dragon and participate in the politics of Wales in your own way. And also and continue to um, encourage the young people to do the same. We have touched on a number of things just to reflect a little. We, we touched on representation and the importance of represent, representation and how much we as a community want to see more people who are black and brown like myself and like yourselves in those positions of power and responsibility, most importantly. We touched on racism in schools and how we are very upset that we are constantly getting reports that young children are facing racism from staff and from students alike, and the fact that we want that to stop, and we were answered in that way as well. We touched on the fact that we think it's very important that Wales does attain a status, a sanctuary, and we wanted to hear about the plans going forward towards that, if any there were. And we also talked about turning rhetoric into re reality and how important it is that our words do not remain as words, but that actually we see them manifesting as actions. And we also spoke on the growing independence movement and how that would incorporate black and brown people alike and not isolate anyone at all. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for taking the time. Thank you for bearing with us and being patient with us as we ran over. We are so sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you all once again. Thank you to the 